I bid you welcome. I welcome you to my house. Welcome to my house. Welcome to my home. Hello horror hounds and welcome to my horror house. This is a request video. Finally after doing all of the Cronenberg films in order and talking about all of Hammer's vampire films in order, I've got the time and space to be a lot more loosey-goosey. This one is for Jim, Salou brother. Him and his uh, brother Joseph uh, have their own channel, Rosenfield 10, which I'll link to below. They've been friends of my channel here for a long, long time. And now I'm finally able to talk about a film that Jim's been gently prodding me about every once in a while on social media. Mate, can you talk about The Legacy? It's one of those strange movies that you only seem to get in the 70s. It's a bandwagon jumper, but it's a prestige bandwagon jumper. So I'm thinking of something like um, Race with the Devil that's clearly jumping on the satanic panic bandwagon, but has got A-list stars in it. This too is, is jumping on that sort of a cult satanic bandwagon, but it, it stars Catherine Ross from Stepford Wives. Uh, Sam Elliott from, uh, well, Christ, what hasn't he been in? The Big Lebowski, Tombstone, freaking Roadhouse. If it's got an awesome moustache in it and it's not Tom Atkins, then it's Sam Elliott. It's one of those films that uh, is peppered with familiar faces. So you've got Charles Gray, who is uh, the bad guy in The Devil Rides Out. And with all due deference to Donald Pleasance, he's, he's my favourite Blofeld from the Bond movies. And also Roger freaking Daltrey from The Who is in this movie. Catherine Ross and Sam Elliott star as LA interior decorators. <laughs> They're hired to do a rum old job over in merry old England. The job is very scant on details, but they'll get a $50,000 payday if they accept it. And the film opens with Catherine Ross on the phone. Um, sort of organising the wire transfer from a bank account whose number ends in 666. And so this quintessentially American couple finds itself in late 70s Britain. And at first we get a little montage with them in London and then they make their way out to the countryside and get into a car accident. Their motorcycle gets hit by an expensive fancy pants Rolls Royce that is chauffeuring around Jason Mount Olive, a typical landed English gentry who invites them back to his place so they can have tea and get cleaned up uh, while he sends their motorbike into the local town to be repaired. And they seem to be expected there soon after a helicopter lands on the front lawn of this, as it turns out, enormous estate with a huge mansion at the centre of it and five more guests get out. None of them seem to be particularly surprised to see Catherine Ross there, although they're surprised that Sam Elliott's tagged along. They're a disparate bunch to be sure, all major successes in their different walks of life, but not a group of people that you would think would associate. So in its favour, the legacy piques your attention right from the start because we're never really sure what's going on. There is a bit of a mystery there. Who are these guests? Why does everyone seem to have been expecting Catherine Ross? All of these guests together in this isolated mansion starts to give you the feel of an Agatha Christie mystery or clue if you want to skew that way and then people start dying and it weirdly becomes Agatha Christie via Dario Argento. It would be a crying shame to give away any of the secrets of the film because I got the greatest enjoyment trying to work out what's going on. It's not by any means an unmitigated success uh, but I would hate to rob from you the little mystery that it has because that's what really kept me watching. This is the kind of 70s movie that will make you think at turns of The Omen then when they get to the village and everyone seems to have a knowing wink and a nod behind the visitors' backs. It will make you think a little bit of The Wicker Man, Agatha Christie as I mentioned, Dennis Wheatley and a smidge of Dario Argento. But 
in feel and execution, I think it has the most in common with the Sentinel for two very good reasons. Firstly, both of those films pull you along by not letting you know what the fuck is going on and both liberally pinch from other more popular uh, and if I'm being a little bit mean, more successful movies. One thing to say loud and clear, it's not scary. It doesn't really work in that way as a horror film, but I found myself becoming strangely fascinated by it as a curiosity of 70s cinema. The mansion looks gorgeous and is dressed beautifully and director Richard Marquand, who would go on to direct Return of the Jedi, shoots the absolute shit out of it. There really are times when you think you're watching an Italian giallo. Marquand had to have been influenced by Argento's Suspiria, which had been released just one year before. But Suspiria benefits from the singular purpose and vision of its director, whereas The Legacy is a magpie of a film without a real identity of its own. It's almost as if it exists to be another one of those 70s occult horror films. So while it looks beautiful and the performances are all pretty fantastic, to be perfectly honest, I don't think you could have asked more of any of the players. The lack of any real sense of atmosphere or growing dread is an oversight for a horror movie. You'd have thought with the fantastic location that they had at their disposal, which I read was Roger Daltrey's actual mansion that he allowed them to shoot there if he could be in the film. You would have thought a mansion like that could have been exploited for a scare or two. Tone is the real Achilles heel of the legacy. The film opens with a really poppy number sung by Kiki D and there's a section in the middle of the film where our couple try to escape the mansion that uh, should be a growing realization that they're trapped but the music that's playing is all sort of whimsy and poppy and again sort of very light and frothy absolutely at odds with the story that's being told I do wonder how many of the legacy's problems would just be simply fixed by a complete overhaul of the score which is just altogether too jolly throughout I will say this though I've been thinking about the premise now for a few days since watching the film and wish it had driven itself to the omen levels of hysteria instead of seeming to settle into a groove and remaining content to stay in a space that it's comfortable in. While the first death is extremely well presented, comes out of left field and veers the movie unexpectedly into a weird new direction, I feel that the subsequent deaths, once that template has been set, could be built up to rather than just, they just happen. That's not to say bonkers things don't happen because bonkers things happen all the time in the legacy. It's just that the sight of a man's charred body being fed to dogs is treated with the same level of nuisance as finding out that your motorbike hasn't been fixed yet. That body being fed to the dogs though, it's possibly one of the most repulsive cadavers I've ever seen on film. Just full of burnt offal and gloopy meaty mess. And if that's not enough meat on display for you, for the ladies and for a lot of the guys as well, I'm sure there's a shot of Sam Elliott's ass that is frankly just magnificent and perhaps goes some way to redressing the imbalance of the propensity of needless female nudity in horror films. For all that I'm ragging on the legacy, it's only because I know in my heart that the film could have done better. For sure though, it is strange, it's an oddity. Everyone involved is really game and there's just enough mystery and weirdness in there that I definitely recommend it to any fan of the slightly oddball satanic horror that you used to get in the 70s, the kind of satanic flicks that they don't really make anymore. Just don't expect to be scared.